Hello everyone, I hope you are doing great today. Welcome back to Pacific Front Channel. For decades, the military and defense companies always try to find a way to increase the lethality and the effectiveness of their forces, while at the same time protecting the troops who operate it. One of the innovation that I think is the most effective one is the invention and application of the remote-controlled weapon system. Since then, militaries and defense companies around the world have developed their own system for various missions and platforms, including Indonesia. Today, we are going to look at remote-controlled weapon system made by Indonesian private company Respati in collaboration with the Indonesian Army. We are gonna look at how it started, its features, and its potential. Stay tuned! What is RCWS? As the name suggests, Remote Controlled Weapon System, also known as Remote Weapon System, is a remotely operated weapon system equipped with a fire control system for various caliber weapons which can be installed on ground, sea, or air combat platform. It allows the troops who operate it in safe position inside a platform or building while keeping the function and firepower of the combat units. I believe only few Indonesian knows about Respati and their products, myself included. I learned about Respati only a few months ago when somebody shared a video about their RCWS on a defense forum. They are a relatively young company, established in 2009 in Bogor, West Java. At first, they were engaged in software development, but as time went by, their field of competence expanded, including mechanical engineering and electronics. And from the start, they are actively involved in the defense sector. Some of their earliest projects include mobile shooting gallery, ECU cooling system for ANOA, FLIR camera for Komodo tactical vehicle, tracking and locking system for the Scorpion tank, and the latest RCWS. The project to develop RCWS was initiated by Respati themselves in 2013, before finally joined the Dislit Bangat, or the Army's Research and Development Bureau, who in 2016 wanted to develop RCWS too. It's not an easy task though. They need 8 years and 2 certification process in 2018 and 2019 before their system is finally listed in the Ministry of Defense Codification Center, which means their product meets the standard for military use. It also undergoes a shock test, water test, dust test, and humidity test, a condition that normally happens on the battlefield. What are its features, you might ask? Well, for starters, it can accommodate 762 general purpose machine gun or 50 caliber heavy machine guns with 250 and 150 rounds respectively. Equipped with day and night camera, thermal camera, and laser range finder up to 1,500 meters, easy to use interface and informative screen, and one feature that impressed me the most is the target locking capability. Very useful when you are engaging a target while moving. RCWS in general has many functions. It can be reconfigured depending on what mission and where you want to install it. Most of them, you can find it installed on top of vehicles, which is one of the reasons why we develop it in the first place. Two benefits can be harnessed by installing it. First, just like what I've said in the beginning, it keeps the harm away from its operator. Having a troop standing in the open and operating a machine gun is dangerous. Sniper can lurk between building, waiting for the right moment to strike, and without a safety harness, the operator can be thrown out of the vehicles if it gets rolled over or getting a blast from an explosion. By installing RCWS, the operator is safe inside the vehicle, protected with a safety belt and armor. The second is maintaining the effectiveness of combat units. Human eyes have a lot of limitation. We can see through darkness, we can see far away objects, we can get tired, and so on. By maximizing the potential of the cameras on the system, we can overcome those limitations and increase unit effectiveness when doing missions such as surveillance and engaging a target. And looking at the dimension of Respatis RCWS, it will be perfect to be installed on top of vehicles such as ANOA, Maung, ATAV, or Medium Tank and MBT. Another function is for armed UGV. Currently, we are entering the era of unmanned warfare. Either it's in land, air, or sea, we already see some kind of unmanned equipment operating in every theater. And the projection of unmanned platform in the future will only be increased. UGV installed with RCWS are growing in popularity and numbers. It's being tested by several armies today, and new tactics have been developed because of it. 
the human UGV pairing will be a normal thing in future battlefields. It serves two purposes. The armed UGV can be used as decoy or scout to search and locate the enemies in dangerous area and provides the squad with more powerful firepower which they can equip before. Another function of armed UGV is for area patrol, perfect to be used as a security on military bases or vital infrastructure. With automation, we only have to set the points where it needs to go and we can just observe it from inside the building protected from the environment. The last function of RCWS is for sentry guns. Today, the sentry operation still needs to be manned by soldiers. Their function is to guard military or sensitive areas from possible attack. With RCWS, the sentry operation can be operated remotely using fiber optic from the operator station. Or it's possible that in the future, it will be operated automatically using sensors and AI. Although I will be afraid to live in that world. Some of the application of this system are the South Korean Samsung Techwin SJRA-1 deployed at the demilitarized zone with North Korea and Israeli Sentry Tech system deployed at the Gaza Strip border. I fully support the collaboration between the private sector and the military like this one. When we are doing it right and with effective funding, we can achieve the best result. Just like what we already see in P6 Ataf, Saktives, and Samar Kamu. Developing RCWS is not an easy task, but we need to start from somewhere. Yes, it needs more time, research, and funding before it's ready to be produced, but I'm not worried. They said it's their first prototype. If their first prototype is that good, I bet the final result will be far better. The demand in the RCWS market is huge and keeps growing. I hope Respatis RCWS can benefit from this huge market as well. Or at least, they can be the main supplier for the local market. There you have it, a locally made RCWS from Respati and the Indonesian Army. A technology that will shape the future of warfare. A future where direct human intervention is less and less needed. What do you think about this system? Share with us in the comment section below. If you are wondering what happened in Indo-Pacific region in June 2021, you can click right there, any second now. And as always, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoy it. Don't forget to like this video, share it with your friends and family, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next one.